So guys, welcome for, welcome, and thanks very much for coming on the call tonight. I am recording it for anyone who um, is unable to get on the call and I will be posting it to the YouTube channel, um, which I'll in turn be posting the link onto Hunters and Gatherers if you have anyone you want to share it with. Um, but tonight we're going to talk around um, online events. I had a question from, I think it was maybe Michelle, um, about, hey, about um, <clears throat> how you do online events and how is the best way to use online events because um, it certainly seems that the way our business is moving for a lot of us is time is of the essence and often getting together and doing belly to belly presentations is not that easy. And certainly if we're trying to do our two and three events a day, then doing them online certainly makes them easy to juggle around all of the other things that we have to do in life. And it certainly has the opportunity to build business a lot quicker and expand into networks apart from what you've got in your own, own backyard. So Jen and I thought that we might go through some of the things that we have been doing over the last several months, how we've been using online uh, media, so to speak, and uh, the benefits, so the advantages and the disadvantages of the things that we have utilised and, and what we've found, particularly around prospects for the product and also prospects for the business. So I thought I'd just start though by sharing a couple of amazing statistics that Kerwin actually shared with us on Friday night. Um, what he shared is that it will take approximately 20 exposures to be able to turn people onto your brand um, by the year 2020. And today it takes people approximately 16 exposures. So the ability for people to have quick and easy access to events on an ongoing basis is probably the way that your business is going to need to be going. So it's like when you're trying to teach a kid to eat kale, you don't just put it in front of him once, you want to put it in front of him a good 12 times um, before he's going to try it. The same thing with um, our product and our business. And the most useful content that we should be giving out to people is something called utility content. So not so much the, um, the, the sell the product, but um, the... Um, oh gosh, I've had a mind blank, the paying it forward, the adding value, to the educational stuff, giving that to people as opposed to vomiting our product or our service onto people. So certainly if you look at most successful businesses now, they are about adding value, adding value, adding value, adding value, adding value until the person turns around and says, surely you've got something that I can buy off you. And so that's the way that we really need to be moving all of the way that we do our events. So adding value, teaching people things, um, not just vomiting juice plus or vomiting the business over people. Social media has a hundred percent higher lead to close rate than outbound media. So we know social media avenues work. 75% of consumers rely on social media to make their purchases online. Shoppers who view videos are 1.8 times more likely to purchase than non-viewers. And there are some 15 million people on Facebook now. So social media is definitely the way to go with regards to building our brand and building our business. I'll never say it's better than belly to belly because there's always that importance of emotion um, and that immediacy of contact um, and those non-verbal communication skills that, that we often use. But certainly, if we're talking to someone over in Scandinavia, it's much more easy to utilise social media than it is to arrange a belly to belly contact. Um, I think as I've talked about a thousand times before, events, events, events is how you need to be building your business. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about um, how you can start to utilise tools online for um, doing events. So Jen, I might flip to you. Is there anything general you want to say about um, social media and events? Um, I think that part of the power, can you guys hear me okay? All good? Cool. Um, I think part of the power of social media is, and what we've sort of used as a um, really good guide, is that it's meeting people where they're at. People are on social media all the time. So some of the other statistics that um, Kerwin shared with us on Friday where I think, you know, the average person spends about 
was it two hours a day or, or something like that on Facebook. So it's quite a lot of time. So the power of social media is that you're, you're in their face without being in their face. <laughs> you're like that constant little reminder. So that's where you get that 20 exposure thing. So just utilizing that as a way of just being a part of someone's life without interfering and without, you know, without them having to reschedule things. It's just good to keep in mind that that's the way it is. That's the way you can kind of use it. Yeah, sorry, I just muted myself. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> thanks for that, Jen. All right, so guys, let's talk about Zoom. So we're all on Zoom right now. Um, we use it as a way of doing our team meetings every Monday night, and um, obviously everyone on here is quite familiar. Is anyone confused about how they utilize Zoom on their computer or on their phones? Does anyone need any clarification? Great, okay. So this is certainly one avenue that you can use and we've had a long history of using, initially it was Skype, but now Zoom for, um, for our team events. What's the value of that? Well, we have this immediate interaction with each other. We can see each other. Um, we can you know, be saying yes or saying no. We can be putting little posts in the chat section down below. We can sort of create that atmosphere, particularly if it's a, an event um, online around, um, say, the product. I'm not sure if anyone was on the call with Dr. Richard Du Bois, but that was a fantastic, uplifting, um, really motivating presentation, and everyone was posting stuff. So that's fantastic. We can also record these, um, which is great. And on my particular Zoom account, um, I've been able to uh, purchase a Zoom account for 100 lines. So I'm able to have up to 100 people on this, which is great. Um, and I can talk, we can be here for hours. I have no limitations. Anyone on here can also get a Zoom account, if you like, um, free of charge. It will only last you 40 minutes. So if you're going to do an event, you've got to remember that you need to finish within 40 minutes. Um, and I think there's only 50 lines that you can access. But still, if you had an event with 50 people on it, that would be brilliant. Um, the great thing about these recordings is then you can save them to YouTube and I've set up the little Tamara Hunter YouTube channel. Anyone can set up a YouTube channel to, to follow the instructions. I mean, I'm, I'm the worst person when it comes to IT and even I was able to set that up. So um, you can then save these. People can then go back and look at these recordings at any time. You just send them the link. You can send them in an email. You can send them in a, um, a text or an SMS they can download the link and they can look straight at the video, which is on YouTube. What is the disadvantage to something like Zoom? Well, for a consumer that you're wanting to perhaps just get on the call to listen to a product demonstration or a business opportunity, they've never used Zoom before. Um, they might only be on their mobile phone. Um, some people find it a deterrent to have to download the app or even go onto the zoom.us website, type in the number and then get on the actual event itself. So I've certainly had people struggle to get on events and sometimes when it's a struggle, um, people will tend, up, tend to just say, no, nah, not worth it. So that is sometimes a negative to using Zoom. Um, sometimes other negatives are people want to be anonymous um, and you don't really have any anonymity here. Even if you turn off like you're eating tacos like Alana is right now and you turn off your picture, um, we still know that it's Alana. Um, so sometimes people don't, they, they want that anonymity. So um, again, sometimes it can be a little bit of a, a deterrent to, to people. But you know, generally speaking, I think if people are interested, um, if you've coached them on how to download the app or if they're very internet savvy, then I think Zoom is a fantastic way to do um, presentations. Jen, what do you think? Definitely. I think that the thing is with, um, I think you've been now with though, Tam, is that what I have found in the past is that Zoom is definitely one of those mediums that once you know how to use it, it's great. I mean, I'm, I just think it's, it's it's fantastic for team meetings, for conversations with, with people. I like to be able to see their face, but it is something that is a little bit difficult sometimes for people. So, but I guess what the, the added benefit is, you know, I love the fact that we've got the chat box there. I love the fact that um, I can be off, but you still know I'm here, if you know what I mean. So you've got to have got that, that, that. And I think but I think it's really important to explain that to people when you're inviting them onto a Zoom call is that, you know, um, 
In fact, I was literally doing it today. I've got a call on Monday that I do every Monday and I was just inviting a whole heap of mums to that. One of the mums said, oh, no, I'm going to have my toddler in the background. I hope that's not going to be a problem. And I was able to say to her, no problem. I'll just mute you out. It's fine. So remember when you're inviting people to Zoom calls that to, to advertise why it's so great, you know, it's, I always say it's like a Brady Bunch screen on, you know, but if there's more of us, it's like Brady Bunch on drugs because we've got so many faces. So we get to see these faces from all around the place, but you have the added advantage of if you don't want to be heard or you don't want to be seen, you don't have to be. So that's, that's, I think that's definitely the draw card for it. Then if you also, if you invite someone onto a call, you can see whether they've shown up or not, unless they, sometimes it just comes up with iPhone. You're like, is that you? But again, that's a great reason. If you don't see their name there, but you see someone whose name is iPhone, you can message that person as follow up and say, I'm not sure if you got on the call last night. It was someone called iPhone. Was that you? And you can start the conversation that way. So. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. It's a good way for you to ensure that the guests that you've invited actually come onto the call. So that's a really good point, Jen. Um, does anyone have any thoughts about Zoom? Any questions about Zoom? Um, has anyone here had any experience with using Zoom for events, even just for a three-way call with somebody? I've often used it... Um, with uh, my team who are in uh, Bangkok. If they've got a customer somewhere else, we'll just do a little three-way call. It's quite nice to have that visual as opposed to just always doing it on the telephone. So that's another great use of the tool as well. Does anyone have any, any other thoughts? Okay, well, let's move on to Facebook. So the thing about Facebook, and this is, I actually took a lot of convincing from Jen and Taryn to embrace doing Facebook events. Um, because I liked this immediacy on Zoom and I liked having control over um, knowing that my guests or prospects were actually on the call. So I took a lot of uh, convincing that um, that doing Facebook events was the way to go. Um, but I, I'm a little bit of a convert. I just, wa I just want to shed a few interesting facts mm -hmm. about Facebook. It is the most visited website and app of all websites and apps. Um, it influences people for both online purchases, but also offline purchases as well. 51% of Facebook users are more likely to buy products of brands that they actually follow online. Visual content that you post, and I learned this about 12 months ago, just posting script doesn't reach anyone. You have to post images. So visual context content greater than 40 times more likely to get shared than if you just write something. Um, and Facebook Live, 70% more reach and almost double the engagement than YouTube. Um, so yeah, Facebook is definitely the place to go. Um, it's definitely the way of the future as far as marketing goes and selling goes. And it is definitely something that we can embrace to do our events online if you're wanting to do something from the comfort of your own home. So um, has, any, has everyone here been to a Facebook event or done a Facebook event or accepted a Facebook event before? Great. Has anyone not done it at all before? Okay. All right. So I'm just going to tell you how to suck eggs for a sec. <laughs> I just want to walk through this for a second. Can everybody see my Facebook page here? Yep, terrific. So you can see Victoria Calhoun's posted some pictures there. All right, so we all know that the events section is down the side here. So you can go into your events section. Oh, look, there's an event on Wednesday night, Power of Whole Food Nutrition. You can go into that event and you can invite whomever you know on your Facebook friendship list. And the way that I have set this particular um, Facebook event up is that anyone who is invited can then invite and then can invite and then can invite. You'll also see, um, so yeah, so I've, I've set that up. And you can go in and edit these and, and change your stipulations. You can say, you know, how long the event is going to go for, um, and so on. So, you know, we, we've got a goodly amount of people who've agreed to, to come along to there's a few familiar faces there. So 89% of people, 89 people going, 1.1, um, well, just over a thousand people invited and a few people can't decide what they want to do. So here's the thing about these online events is that if you accept them, 
it doesn't matter if you don't go, but if you accept them, it means that you can then go into that event and look at the material. If you don't accept the event and the event has passed, then you're not able to. So I would always be encouraging all of you to, even if you can't go, accept the event because then it gives you the opportunity to invite others to come along. Um, I usually leave my events open for a couple of days. The reason that I take them down is that I think it creates that um, sense of urgency that it's not going to be up forever, but also it creates the sense of curiosity that if it's been taken down and, you're, and you've got someone who, oh my God, I missed it, don't worry, we've got another one coming in a few weeks' time. So, um, so this is sort of the, on, the way you use online events. Um, other ways that you can use uh, the event section is just to post an, a live event that you might be having and invite people using this media. But the way that we're using it from an online perspective is that we're actually running the events in these Facebook event groups themselves. So um, you'll see people have already posted. Uh, on Wednesday night, I'll be posting a live Facebook video in, in there. And I just want to take you back to this... Up here, to those of you who've never created an event before, if you go into the events here, then you can click on this button up here, create event. Now you can create a private event or you can create a public event. I would not recommend that you create a public event for two reasons. Number one, you want to have some degree of control of the sort of people that come onto the event. The last thing you want is for random people coming on and sabotaging your event. All right, so that's the reason I would not set it up as a public event. The other thing too is by creating a private event, it enables people to invite, 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 and they know exactly who of their uh, group that they have invited um, has been invited to come along. So I think creating a private event just gives you that little bit of control um, over, over the event itself. Jen, do you have any thoughts around that at all? I've muted you, love, sorry. All right, you're unmuted. <laughs> I'm gonna stop, you touch it. All right. <laughs> okay, done, you hear right. me? Yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> um, I think the main thing when you're inviting people to a Facebook event like this, when it's, when it's a live event, we say that, you know, we put a time on it. So you can see the one on, um, Tomorrow's is, is Wednesday, 8 p.m. And people will look at that and they'll go, I'm busy on Wednesday. So it's really important when it's a live, when we say live, as in Facebook live, we're doing a Facebook live recording, it's really important that you let people know that that doesn't matter, um, that they can just, if they're interested in coming and listening to the information at some point within 48 hours after that, from that time onwards, just to still click accept because otherwise they're not going to be able to, like tomorrow I'm saying, otherwise, you know, just like you, they won't be able to get back in and, and get a seat. So I think that's something that I've definitely formulated, you know, when I'm inviting someone to that, I always put that in the message that just, just click accept if you're interested in seeing the information, even if you're not going to be there to see it as it happens. Um, and then you'll get to go and watch it at your leisure. And to be honest, that's, that's the power of... That's the power of the Facebook Live events when we run them on a, an, an event page like this is that people don't have to be available at 8 o'clock. And I think that's probably one of the advantages over Zoom is that, you know, if you have a Zoom call, everyone's got to be available at that certain time, whereas when it comes to Facebook Live events that we do, um, they don't have to be. They can come back and have a look at it at any time you know, when, when it suits them. So it's a little bit more flexible, which is also a little bit more flexible when, we, when we're speaking globally, when we're thinking of our team that live elsewhere, you know, that we don't all work on the same um, time zone or time schedule. So that's where this sort of holds a little bit more power, I think. So I guess we're talking, the, the one we're talking about here, well, Tam's just basically showed you how to set up event page. And the one we're talking about for Wednesday is Tam's going to be recording herself and going live within that group. But there's also static... Um, Facebook events that you can do and if you go into the CLT, oh, sorry, rather into the shred guide, the system guide that's for us franchisees, it actually lays out a Facebook event 
in there for you. And and one of the ideas they had was was setting up a Facebook event that runs for the 10 days of Shred so that you're posting things. So it's like a 10-day event so that you're posting things in there every day and that people are just sort of seeing it as it, as it pops up. So there's loads of different ideas of how you can utilise an events page. So you can do a Facebook live feed into that. You can do, do it as a road, for example, or you can just during one evening or one hour, just be posting up posts every few minutes for people to follow along with. I guess, um, again, what we probably learned from Kerwin on um, Friday is that video is king, which is, I think, why Facebook Lives are so effective, because video is king. It's what engages people. They don't have to wait. It's instant. We're definitely a society of instant gratification, and it really speaks to that audience. Yeah, and that's a really good point. The other interesting point that he made, and I'm, I'm yet to go to this extent with um, Facebook Live or any videos that I post, um, is he recommends putting captions on your videos. Uh, and the reason for that is in that two hours that people are spending on Facebook, often they're doing it on work time. <laughs> so they're hardly going to have their earbuds in and they're hardly going to be listening to a video. So I don't think you can do that with Facebook Live, but certainly if you are planning on, you know, pre-recording and then posting up a video, you want to make sure that you've got captions on. Um, so, you know, Jen's touched on a number of the advantages of doing an events page. Um, a, you keep it quite contained. The main thing really is you're meeting people where they're at. So people easily, there's very few people out there now who are not on Facebook. And if they're not on Facebook now, they'll be on Facebook eventually. But, you know, we're meeting people where they're at. They know how to get on it. They can get it on their phone. They can get it on their iPad. They can get it on their computer. So it's easy for people to go into Facebook. It's equally easy for them to go into an events page. They just click accept. And that's really the thing that I would be saying to you. If you are adding people and inviting people, to these Facebook events, make sure that you personally message them or send them an SMS with the invite itself. You know, the one that I've got that I did the other night with the um, tomatoes on it. Copy and paste that into your files um, or into your photo section and be sending that to everybody who you add to that event because some people don't see it. Some people get invited to so many events every single week that they don't actually see that particular invite. Whereas if you've sent them a personalized message saying, hey, want you to come along to this event Wednesday night, I've invited you, just press accept. Um, then at least they're not going to miss it. And then you might want to say to them and feel free to invite any of your friends who you think might benefit from checking this out. So that's, you know, really the advantage. Um, Jen touched on the fact that, you know, you can go back and watch it again later and, and different time zones. What are some of the disadvantages of doing, um, say, a Facebook event, either live or static? Well, static, I think, I think the days of static are gone. What we used to do is we used to create PowerPoint presentations, then we'd save each individual slide as a JPEG, and then we would post them up and put some text underneath. I think the days of static Facebook events are gone. Is anyone confused about what I'm talking about, a Facebook static event? Yeah, so you know when you go to a lecture and someone does a PowerPoint presentation and they're flicking up individual PowerPoints. Well, in an events page, just like the one that I've shown you, you can actually do individual posts with PowerPoint-like presentations. So a picture and then some text underneath. So Taryn, um, myself and Jen last year, yeah, last year we did a series of business events using static posts and video. Um, I think the sort of the days of the static post, you know, just putting up a picture and putting a bit of text underneath is probably gone. I think people definitely respond more to video. They're more likely to watch it than sort of just have it on their phone and be cooking the dinner um, at the same time. Uh, but certainly you can do that. You can just have a series of, of posts that you have in a Facebook event and you have a little text underneath them. Um, if you ever want to borrow one, I've got a script on, you know, the power of whole food nutrition. I've essentially done it as a PowerPoint presentation if you ever want to use it. But certainly I haven't got a hell of a lot of traction out of doing that. I've had far more traction out of the, the doing these Facebook live events. And you've also got that sort of interaction that you get as you're asking people questions and you're asking them to give you a thumbs up and a heart. And you don't, you don't tend to get that on the static posts that you post. Does that make sense, guys? Is anyone still confused? Great. Okay. Um, so, yeah, certainly I'd be encouraging you to, to use events if you're wanting to, you know, put on, put on um, like a little in-home presentation for people who might not be able to make it. Um, Jen 
Any other disadvantages you can see to doing the Facebook events? I guess the only difference is, you know, um, well, I suppose, you know, the disadvantage is you can't record it like you can with the Zoom call. However, you know, if depending on how long you want to keep it there, you, people have got access to it beyond, you know, the, the half hour, the hour you're using it anyway. Um, I don't know, I think, um, I guess the only other disadvantage is that if you're doing a Facebook Live thing, unless they are liking and commenting as it's going on, you don't know whether they saw it or not. So we'll be able to see, uh, last time Tamara did the Whole Food um, event, of uh, Facebook Live event on the Wednesday, or well, that was a Sunday evening, there was over 400 or something, uh, that's last time I checked anyway, it was over 400 people viewed that video. That's the advantage, guys, is because everyone's on Facebook, it's easy for them to watch it. So that's, I mean, when are we going to have 400 people on a Zoom? One day, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> to get it, like four different Zoom accounts in a while. But my point is, we don't know who those people are unless they're commenting and liking. So the fortune still, regardless of how you do this, the, regard, the fortune is still in the follow-up. If you invite someone to be a part of it, even, even if you see them commenting, you know, you can be commenting at the same time and having a conversation with them underneath, but even if you don't, you can still go back to them afterwards and say, I loved it, it was amazing. Did you actually get on? I'm not sure. I couldn't, couldn't see whether you, because I didn't see you comment or like anything. You can say that. That's what I say. Um, and then if they haven't viewed it, you can say, well, quick, you know, if it's a limited time one, you can say, quick, get on there and you've got another 24 hours to watch it. I'd love to hear your feedback. I'll check in with you tomorrow, something to that effect. So it's just understanding the parameters around it and what you're going to have to do to make to take full advantage of what it is that's in front of you. Yeah, and I guess that's the um, the skill of whoever the presenter is is to entice people to make comments. You know, where are you from? What time is it? Where are you coming from? You know, what have you just eaten for dinner? <laughs> Who's got kids? So enticing people to make comments so that number one, it creates atmosphere, but number two, you start to see the sorts of people that are watching for sure. Um, I would always strongly recommend that if you are inviting people to um, Facebook Live events, that you know, leading up to the event, you're posting them, hi, just checking, are you coming on? Just want to make sure you know how to use it and so on. So having that interaction leading up to the event as well. Um, and finally, I guess, before we wrap things up is um, the new way <laughs> of doing events that, that Jen is now experience, experimenting with. And that is um, setting up Facebook mm. groups that are all about events. So again, this is not my area of expertise. I've just mastered events. Can I pass over to you to talk a little bit more about that, Jen, and your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, this came out of a brainstorm think tank thing that we did with our team last night, talking about how we want to move ahead with events and having a really even spread between Zoom events, Facebook events, and in-person events. It's a little bit confusing now we do Facebook live events because we kept saying live and we were getting confused between whether that meant in-person. So I'm going to say in-person or live, I mean on Facebook live. What we've decided to do, um, I suppose one of the hurdles we found with the Facebook Live events is that you, know, you still have to invite people onto that events page and they still have to accept it to be able to even see the Facebook Live once it's there. So what we thought of is, again, keeping in mind this whole 20 exposure thing, um, to capture a group of people and to almost drip feed them um, in a way that we know they're going to engage because we know that video engages. What we've decided to do as a team is create a, a group that is essentially a customer care group, but it's not for posting anything else in there apart from live feeds. So what we've committed to is that we will have like a roster every week. There'll be one person who will be responsible for doing the Juice Plus product, you know, um, summary of their presentation. Maybe if just 15 minutes, a live video once a week, there's gonna be a live video, someone different telling their story, why it made sense to them, and then just going through the product, our three products, that's it. So we wanna make sure, and because I think, just backtracking a little bit, that's the only downfall, or one of the only downfalls with the difference between Zoom and Facebook Live. When you're doing a Facebook Live, unless you're in the room with someone else, or you can pass the phone around and you've got lots of people in the same room, you're only going to hear from one person. So with Zoom, obviously, we can ask different people to share their stories, and so there's power in that. So we're trying to kind of harness the energy of both of them. So we figure if we invite all our customers into this group, it's almost like a Facebook 
channel, like video channel. Um, and so only, the only things that appear in that are going to be videos, so that video, live video feeds, so that people are just going to hear different people's stories throughout. And then if someone wants to do a live feed because they're making a smoothie and they want to share the recipe or whatever, they can do that. Or, you know, doing a, a foodie facial, they want to share that, they can, but it's only for live videos. So we, it's brand new. It's a new idea, but that's why we've come up with that, just so we can kind of drip feed and they're going to be hearing more and more and seeing different people doing it and just seeing that it's a part of our lives. So we're hoping, we'll, we'll, we'll report back to you. We'll tell you how it goes. Watch this space. <laughs> I like that. So is there anything more that anyone wants to ask about online events, how you do Zoom events, how you do Facebook online events? Is there any other comments people have? The reality is, guys, that it's, it's, it's honestly just about getting out there and doing it. The thing we learned when John Holowaty and Simon Mitchell came is that you just have to do it. You've got to do your first. Has anyone here never done a Facebook Live, even onto their own personal page? you just got to do it. <laughs> like, I remember my first one. Do it, do it, do it. Pile of crap. It's really fun. <laughs> it's really crap. But the more you do them, the more you get comfortable. My suggestion maybe write down a list of 10 really interesting things that you'd like to talk about. You know, really interesting thoughts that you might have had, discussions that you might have had with people, revelations that you've had about yourself or your health, results that you might have had on Shred or CLT or, or you know, just changing your lifestyle, you know, things that you've learned from your children that day. Set, set up a, you know, a list of maybe 10 topics and just do one a day. Well, just do one a week if it's too scary or do one every second day. But the more times you do them, that you don't have to be on there for 20 minutes. You can be on there for five minutes, 10 minutes. You want to be able to start practicing things like getting an audience, um, attracting an audience, having them interact with you, find out what works, what doesn't as far as topics go. And the only way that you're going to know that is if you start to do them. So that's a really good way, actually, of just starting to do some events of some sort um, is to create some traction on your own personal page by just doing a live feed. Uh, and you know that if you do them, we're going to get on there and support you <laughs> because that's what you do. Yeah. So hopefully that information tonight has been helpful at all different levels, all different tools that we have. I'm just going to...